today we'll talk about introduction of cloud first we'll see the terminologies before the cloud we should understand some terminologies so first we will be discussing that terminology then we'll answer what exactly it's cloud and its origin then we will be discussing why we are using cloud which cloud should we use and how secure my cloud is if i'm putting my data to cloud how secure that data is in the cloud then we'll talk about types of cloud then we'll talk about the cloud computing models we'll be talking about the aws services and projects terminologies so before knowing the cloud you should aware of this terminologies such as servers or we used to say it as a virtual machine virtualization virtualization is a concept what exactly the data center is what is caching and what is environments maybe you already aware of this terminologies so let's discuss the terminologies now what exactly a server you might have heard multiple times that what is server let's say i'll give you the school definition of a server and that is called high configuration computer which serves you which serves you data that is called your server you might have a virtual machine or you used to say vm what is that in vm in one hardware you can have multiple os at a time using hypervisor so hypervisor you can consider it as a software or hardware component of the computer now what do i mean by that that i can have multiple os at a time in one single hardware so for that i'll be explaining you uh, i'll be giving example of my own laptop so this is the hardware of my laptop i'm using the windows operating system using the hypervisor using some software such as virtual box this one hardware this one laptop can be considered as a multiple machines multiple computers which i'll call it as a guest os here you can see i'm having guest os 1 guest os 2 guest os 3 and guest os 4 here in guest os 1 i can host linux machine in guest os 2 i can host again windows server guest os 3 i can have ubuntu and in guest os 4 i can have sushi one hardware can be considered as a multiple system and here this system this os can be considered as a fully fledged computer where we can host the our application so in this way we have saved a lot of cost using one machine it can be act as a multiple machine and suppose my laptop is having 8 gb ram so i will allocate 2 gb ram for my own laptop 2 gb ram for this os 2 gb ram for this 2 gb ram for this and 2 gb ram for this can be depends as per the requirement of the os so this is called your virtual machine what is virtualization the same thing which we have just discussed just now in one machine we can have multiple in one hardware we can have multiple machine that is called the concept of virtualization what is data center so we will be having dedicated space which will keep all our machines virtual machine and other storage and networking components that is called our data center data center can be a size of football ground it can be a building or it can be a dedicated space i'll show you how the server or data center machines will look like here are the virtual machines or you can say it as a hardware or you can say it as a server fine and this type of server the whole building will be filled with all this type of a server we'll talk about caching now what is caching caching is a temporary storage area caching is a you might have heard cache memory caching is a temporary storage area now i'll give you the example of caching suppose if you'll open your gmail in your laptop once you open your gmail and now if you'll close your browser and again open your gmail it will not take a lot of time because it will store the uh, it will store some files it will store some a it will store some files it will store some cookies in your laptop in the hard disk of your laptop whenever you will open the gmail again it will access those it will fetch the data from those cache memory it will not fetch the data directly from the server but if you delete that cache memory and if you again try to open the gmail it will take some time maybe you might have heard the deployment environment so deployment environment is nothing but the environment where your computer software or application will be deployed it is the environment where your program software or application will be deployed you might have heard production environment which we used to say brd you might have heard dev environment development environment and you might have heard uat environment going forward if you will be having any doubts here going forward we will clear those doubts pretty much clear with the terminologies that you should know before the cloud now let's start what is cloud the cloud is a term referring to access computer information technology and software application through network connection often by accessing data center using wide area network or internet connectivity does it make some sense so let me simplify it any service which you use via the internet it is called 
cloud for now just understand this any service which you use where the internet is called cloud example your google drive in google drive what you do you will put your images you'll put your movies and everything but can you use the google drive without accessing the internet answer is is the cloud is a completely new term because we have heard the cloud cloud is currently a hot technology and we have heard the cloud recently in uh, 2000 around 2010 and all 2010 and 11 started booming around 2010 and 11 so is it a completely new term answer is no cloud is originated all the way back in 1916 during urbanet project now what is urbanet project this project is nothing but the, it's the advent of the internet from here the internet basis of internet came why we are using cloud why we use cloud why we require cloud so first we have to stop spending money and maintaining the data so we will not maintain the data center instead of that we will rent those machines from the cloud vendors okay, so that we will just pay whatever we will be using it can go global in minutes we will stop the guessing capacity it will increase the speed and agility we can benefit from massive economy of scale trade capital expense for variable space what are the available cloud vendors in the market we will be having multiple cloud vendors available in the market which cloud vendors let's discuss some cloud vendors so first we were having aws we were having azure by microsoft google cloud platform by google ali cloud Trackspace, ibm dell boom we were having other cloud vendors as well aws is a market leader in cloud aws market capitalization is almost 33 percent azure is around 14 percent gcp is in single digit and ali cloud and other cloud vendors are nowhere in the so aws is the clear winner here how secure the cloud is how my data will be secured in the cloud so cloud is almost like as secure as your on-prem data centers only without the cost of maintaining and facilities and, and hardware in cloud you don't have to manage the physical servers or storage components instead you will be using security based tool to monitor and protect the flow of information into and out of your cloud resources cloud vendor will be having several compliance certificates from the regulatory body bodies as well which will certify that your cloud is secure let's see the types of cloud first we were having public cloud what do i mean by that public cloud i will take the example of the data center suppose i'm having one data center where everyone can rent the server i will give the example here i'll come to here here this will be active as of server 1 server server 3 server 4 server 1 will assign to someone else server 2 will assign to someone else server 3 will assign to someone else and same server 4 will assign to someone else even though these all the servers are in same hardware there will be no there will be complete isolation there will be no overlap as i already mentioned this OS will be act as a dedicated machines one client this will be assigned to another client so this is called your public cloud in public cloud will be offering servers to anyone anyone can purchase the server from this hardware and there will be complete isolation there will be no overlapping of the data second is private cloud private cloud i would be saying in-house server or your on-prem server will be considered as a private cloud so there is a myth can public server can the cloud vendor cannot provide the private cloud answer is if i'll give you the example of aws only so aws is having dedicated data center for us government that's nothing but a private cloud you can reach out to the cloud vendor and say suppose this is your data center don't assign anyone don't assign this os to anyone i will rent your os i'll rent your whole hardware so you can also rent private cloud from the cloud vendor and third is hybrid cloud so hybrid cloud is a mix of public cloud and private cloud so in that way you can say hybrid cloud is a mix of public cloud plus on-prem cloud at last which is not so famous cloud most of our, or some of you will not be heard of this term and that is called community cloud now what is community cloud so community cloud I will give the example let's say Accenture, Deloitte, TCS, Infosys and Wipro. They will come together, they will say okay let's build a cloud, we will share the cost and we will share the resources. So that is called your community cloud. Let's see cloud computing service models. You might have heard infrastructure as a service, you might have heard platform as a service, you might have heard software as a service. We were having other service model like DAS data as a service. We were having other service model like fast function as a service in on-prem so on-prem you are only the owner of it everything will be managed by you whether it's hardware whether it's software software is nothing but i'm i mean to say here software is nothing but os plus middleware and other dependencies along with the application data in that application you have to you are responsible for everything in on-prem server or on-premise 
virtual machines or on-premise data center now what is infrastructure as a service now what do you understand by infrastructure so it's nothing but hardware if you'll see the computer will be divided into these four components hardware above it we will be having software plus middleware above it will be having applications and above it will be having data on that applications infrastructure as a service hardware will be managed by aws or other cloud vendor so cloud vendor will say okay i'll provide you the hardware you can access that hardware using the internet and above that that hardware you can create software and middleware and whatever application you want to create in that infrastructure it's up to you in pass along with the hardware they will provide us the software as well so in that software or middleware they will provide you the middleware software or os along with that hardware and they will say okay i will give you the platform where you can host your application and manage your data that is called platform as a service and at last we were having software as a service here hardware software or middleware component an application will be managed by the vendor you are uh, you're just responsible for the data you own the best example of software as a service is outlook.com or google drive you do not have any access to their hardware you do not have any access to their platform you just have access to the application even though that application is managed by the google and you will be you'll just responsible for the data you are having there so google drive and outlook.com is the best example of your software as a service what is aws cloud aws cloud where i've already mentioned what is cloud so aws cloud is came around 2006 earlier they decided they created this platform for their e-commerce site known as amazon.com later they decided to sell it as a service what are the services that aws provide it's 165 around 165 services that AWS provides. Let's see what are the services they provide. So I have divided those services into the several categories. So here you can see AWS provides services in several categories such as IoT, nothing but Internet of Things, Machine Learning, AI, Artificial Intelligence, Database, Analytics, Satellite, even AWS provides you satellite service as well, Robotics, Blockchain, cost management mobile compute networking everything can be pro is provided by aws if any uh, solutions architect certificate or any aws expert know all these services or all these categories answer is no you can't know each and every service in aws you just have to focus on the services which is relevant to you which service categories we will be focusing on in this course so we will be focusing on networking cost management application security containers management and governance compute storage and database and along with the aws global infrastructure all these services this service category we will cover in this service category we will be having around 20 to 25 services that we have to focus on and at last we'll talk about the project which is very important to get to know the fully fledged understanding of your aws cloud we will be doing multiple projects but if we will talk about the dedicatedly three projects so here it is the project one what we will be doing in project one we will create a dynamic website or you can say dynamic web application which you can access from the google suppose you will be typing xyz.com so it will hit your website where every component infrastructural component application component will be made from scratch we will be registering the domain we will be creating the website we will be creating the infrastructure and in that infrastructure i will host that website and if someone will be typing the url let's say xyz.com or xyz.example.com it will hit your website the second project we will build a serverless bot a serverless it's a very hot technology netflix is using serverless even amazon.com itself is using serverless for their e-commerce site what we will be doing we will build a serverless bot which will fetch the image from s3 bucket what is s3 bucket we will be discussing it later for now just consider s3 bucket as a storage just like your google drive s3 is also a storage if i will upload something in s3 bucket will compress that image and it will send it to the another s3 bucket what is the use case of it so if you consider the professional cameras professional cameras will take the image of let's say i'll be saying 100 mb or 150 mb and in some cases the image which will be clicked by the professional cameras will be around 250 mbs as well so can we put those 250 mb files in the websites 
it will take a lot of time to load so i need to compress it that image so that i can use that image into the website so for that we will be creating a serverless bot i will upload something into the s3 bucket any image into the s3 bucket immediately this s3 bucket will will trigger a function known as lambda function or we can say it as a serverless function and that function that serverless function or that bot will compress the image and send it to the another s3 bucket which will compress it from 10 folds or 20 folds we can decide it later on and at last we will see the automation so whatever in the project one whatever we created we will be doing it manually from scratch whatever the infrastructure we will be creating from scratch but in the third project we will create that using the cloud formation template known as infrastructure as a code so whatever our requirement is i will write it in a code don't worry you don't have to know any coding we will discuss that in the course we will write that cloud formation template we will create the automation and whenever you will run that template that whole infrastructure will automatically create it and this infrastructure will be having ec2 nothing but elastic compute cloud it will be having low scaling load it will be having vpc and it will be having elastic load balancer what is the prerequisite of this course the only prerequisite for this course is you should be having a aws free tier account and you're good to go aws free tier account along with the internet and then you're good to go so we are pretty much done if you'll be having any doubts please write it to info at the rate mindmagics.com thanks a lot guys thanks everyone bye